do these calculations when you're dissolving in a solution with a common ion. And the second thing we're going to do is there's a question that is asked that's, will it precipitate? If you have a chemical reaction where you could get a precipitate, will it precipitate is the question. You can figure it out mathematically before you even start your reaction in an experiment. So the first thing says dissolving in a solution with a common ion. The KSP of BaCl3 is 8.1 times 10 to the negative 8. We want to know what the solubility is of the BaCl3. Well, this is an old problem. We're not doing anything new, so it's similar to the KSP problem that we did before. First step, write your equation. Okay, so let's write our equation for this breaking down. So we've got BaCl3, and what is BaCl3 going to break up into? And this is a solid, remember, on the left. Barium with a 2 plus charge, aqueous, right? Plus CO3 with a negative 2 charge, also aqueous. Okay, let's write our KSP expression. So we've got KSP, leave a little bit of space for writing either X's or writing a value in there. So we've got KSP is equal to, what do I do? Concentration of? Just, just the products over the reactants. But remember, the reactant is what? Solid. A solid, so I don't need to worry about that. So it's Ba2 plus times CO3, 2 minus. Okay, well, they give us the KSP. So they tell us that this value is 8.1 times 10 to the negative 8. Do I know anything else? No. What do you use if you have no other numbers to use? X. X. And if I call this X, then what do I have to call those? X and X. Awesome. So what is this equal to? X squared, right? It's just equal to X squared. So X goes in there and X goes in there. And now how do I solve for X? Square root it. So I'm going to square root this side and I'm going to square root the other side. And please tell me what you get when you square root it. Okay, perfect. So it looks like two sig figs. So 2.8 times 10 to the negative 4. Yes? 2.8 times 10 to the negative 4. And what are the units of this now? Molarity. Molarity. K doesn't have a unit, right? Because that's just telling you whether your reaction's favorite reactants or products. But this is X, and that's a molarity. Okay. Now, they're asking for the solubility of BaCO3. So if that's X, it is equal to my Ba2 plus concentration. It's also equal to my CO3 2 minus concentration. And in addition, what else is it equal to? The BaCO3. But it's the solubility of my BaCO3. Okay? It's not the actual con uh, uh, concentration that went into my container. It's how much did what? What does solubility mean? Dissolved. Dissolved. Perfect. It's the amount that dissolved. Awesome. Okay? So that's what we're talking about here. So that's our final answer in moles per liter. All right, this next question now is a continuation of this. And I do want to show you a couple of things before we really move into this. So it's asking what the solubility is of BaCO3 in a 0.15 molar Na2CO3. OK, well, that's kind of weird, because we've never had a situation where we have two things that are going in one. And my first question for you is, if you did a reaction with this, what would you notice? If you did a chemical reaction with this, what would you notice? If you added these two and did a double dating, double displacement reaction, what would you notice? Get the you get the same products. Why? They're both carbonates, so you're going to get the same product. Okay? So from what you would look at, you would say there's no reaction. What you would end up saying is there's no reaction because it doesn't look like that there's, there's any reaction that's going to take place. Okay? So um, let me just come to the simulation for just a minute and play this here. So this is silver bromide, but it may as well be the barium carbonate because it's just a plus two and a minus two, so it's a one to one that end up splitting off. Okay? So what we can see here is a lot of it is insoluble. Okay? So a lot of it's sticking together, but some of these ions are floating around. Now with the simulation, I couldn't actually do it where I could add two in there. So I couldn't add two solutions into one, even if I designed my own, it still wouldn't let me add two. So let's just imagine, let me pause this for a second, so let's stop it. Let's just imagine that I added, inside of here, I added sodium carbonate, okay? If I added sodium carbonate into here, what do you know about sodium carbonate? What do you know about something that starts with sodium? Sol it's soluble. Sol it's soluble. Perfect. What does that mean to you? Dissolve. Does all of it dissolve? Yeah. Yes. It pretty much all is going to come right into the container 
and all of it is going to start to dissolve. And you're going to get Na pluses and CO3 2 minuses all within. Okay? Okay, so let's imagine that inside of here, in addition to having the barium carbonate, so let's just say that we've got our bariums and our carbonates that are inside here. In addition, I also add in sodium carbonate, Na2CO3. Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a bunch of Na+, plus, Na+, plus, and then CO3 2 minus, right? Two for every one, yes? So I'm going to get another Na+, plus, Na+, plus, CO3 2 minus. Okay? And the same thing's going to happen all throughout. All right? The thing is that the solutions have no idea which one came from the sodium carbonate and which one came from the barium carbonate. But we know that barium carbonate in equilibrium tends to want to form what? A solid. We know that based on the KSP, our equilibrium is sitting far further to the left because it was like a 10 to the negative... 13, whatever it was, whatever that value was. It's a really small value. So we know that it's favoring the reactants, which are the solid. So what's going to happen is, you know how some of these are barium ions that are inside of here, okay? And what the barium ion is going to do is it's going to find some more carbonate, and it's going to come together and bond with those carbonates and form more solid until it reaches what again? Equilibrium, okay? So the idea is, by having sodium carbonate inside of here, what we're basically doing is we're adding more carbonates, and by adding more carbonates, more of the barium is going to want to bond with that carbonate to form the solid. Does the sodium want to come back together again with the carbonate? Yes or no? Why not? What do you know about the alkali metals? Again, they're what? They're soluble. The sodium does not want to come back together again with this. But the barium does, okay? And so what it's going to do is it's going to reach an equilibrium and it's going to start to bind with the extra bariums that are in there until it reaches that point again. Okay, so what this question is asking is what is the solubility of the barium carbonate if we were to add 0.15 Na2CO3? Well, the thing is, if you add this in there, it's going to start taking away some more of the barium as ions. And so what should happen to your KSP value. Well, if you're forming more reactants, then what's going to happen? Is your number going to get smaller? Or is your number going to get bigger if you have more solid or more reactants? Even smaller. Okay? Your number should go down even more when we add the Na2CO3 to it. Okay? So let's check to see how we're going to figure this out. So first thing is, let's write our two um, expressions. Okay? So we already wrote the BaCO3, so we've got the BaCO3 yields solid, yields our Ba2 plus and our CO3 2 minus. And now we know our Na2CO3 yields solid, yields the Na2 Na plus plus the CO3 2 minus. Okay. So they're giving us this 0.15 molar of the Na2CO3. So we're going to say that this is 0.15 molar. And you know, that's not the solubility of it, that's the actual concentration of it. But we know that all of it's going to do what anyway? It's all going to dissolve. So really, once it reaches equilibrium, how much of this stuff are you going to have left? Solid. Zero. That's going to actually end up being zero. And then this here is going to be a point, what, sorry, point what molar? 0.3 molar. And this one is going to be a... 0.15 molar. Why? Again, it's based on the what? The, the ratios. Okay? We don't care about this though. We don't really care about the Na+. Plus, okay? The Na+, plus is not really affecting our solution. It's just inside of there and it's just floating around. So that's not really mattering to us. What does matter is the CO3 2 minus. Okay? All right. So now let's talk about this BaCO3 um, that we have. And we know what our KSP value is already. They've told us what our KSP value is. So let's write our expression down for this. So we're not going to write an expression for this. You only write expressions for things, KSP expressions, for things that are more insoluble. So we've got KSP is equal to the concentration of the Ba2 plus times the concentration of CO3 2 minus, just like we said before. So we know our KSP value, we know it's 8.1 times 10 to the negative 8, that's good, is equal to. Okay, so our barium ion concentration 
we don't really know exactly what this is right now, okay? If we call this x, that works because we have no idea what it is. So let's just call this x, okay? Okay, so if we call this x and we call this x, that's fine, okay? We got that, right? Everybody's good with that? One to one ratio? The only thing is, if we come over here, the CO3 2 minus is now added in. And so this isn't really x because CO3 2 minus is CO3 2 minus. So it's not x, it's actually x plus what? 0.15. Now, we know that this value of x is really small, like it was up here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to actually ignore it. It's insignificant. If this is 0.15 and you add 0.15 plus 0 0.00028, is that going to make a difference to you? Even if it were 0 0.004, would that make a difference if you added that to 0.15? No. no, it's insignificant. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is approximately equal to 0.15. Okay, that's approximately equal to 0.15. All right. So when we go to figure this out, we're going to call Ba2 plus x, but we'll guess what we're going to call CO3 2 minus? 0.15. 0.15. And now go ahead and solve for x. So we're just going to divide by 0.15, and we get that x is equal to, grab this here, x is equal to 5.4 times 10 to the negative 7th, yes? Yep. 5.4 times 10 to the negative 7, and what are the units of this again? Molarity. Molarity. Okay, now um, they're asking for the solubility of the BaCO3, and that's x, so then that must be x right there also, so it's just your BaCO3 solubility as well, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, got it? So let's just recap what we did here. So we understand that the sodium carbonate is going to be dissolving inside with the barium carbonate, and carbonate is carbonate. It, it, there's no way of being able to tell which carbonate came from this and which carbonate came from that. Solutions can't tell. Carbonate is carbonate, okay? So what happens is it's going to try to reach equilibrium because there's too much of the carbonate on this side. So if there's too much, it's almost like adding more of this. What do we say with Lachat? If you add to one side, what happens? Favors the opposite side. And so if it favors the opposite side, then that means that we're going to, favor, we're going to be favoring the solid in that case, okay? And so what we ended up doing was we just said, okay, well, our CO3 2 minus is significantly higher in this. This x amount is so small that we can basically call it insignificant and ignore it. And so then we can multiply those through to get that answer. Okay. All right, last type of problem. So the last type of problem is will it precipitate? Okay. So if you mix two things together, will you get a precipitate or is there not enough to get a precipitate? Okay. So it says, would you expect to produce a precipitate if you mixed 100 mils of this lead nitrate with 300 mils of this sodium chloride. Well, first thing is let's write an, um, an equation to see if we would expect that. So we've got PBNO32 plus NaCl, and it's a double dating reaction, right? So we're gonna get PB is now with Cl, and Na is now with what? NO3. So we've got Na plus and NO3 minus plus, and then we've got the PB is a plus two is with Cl minus, so it's PbCl2. Okay, let's write these phases. Well, this is aqueous over here, and this is also aqueous because there's solutions of it. What about NaNO3, aqueous or solid? Aqueous, and what about PbCl2? Well, the I clobbers, silver, lead, and mercury, do you remember that? So is that one one of them? Yes. That's lead, so that one's gonna be solid. So this right here is the one that we're worried about that may precipitate, okay? That's the one that may form a precipitate is the lead chloride. Well, they gave it to us anyway. They told us, that's the giveaway right there. They tell us that it's gonna be, that's the KSP. So they're giving it to us anyway. We didn't even have to really do too much of that. As far as balancing the equation goes, we would need a two in front of there, and then we would need a two in front of there if we wanted to have a balanced equation. Okay, let's write our expression for PBCL2 because that's what matters to us. So we've got PBCL2, solid, arrow, PB2 plus, plus two Cl minuses, yes? And our expression. So let's just leave a tiny bit of space 
and we'll get our expression now. So we get KSP is equal to PB2 plus times CL minus squared. All right, so now we have our expression and we have our equation for this. And what are they giving us? Well, they give us KSP. They tell us that KSP is 1.62 times 10 to the negative 5. So we need to know what the concentrations of these two are. Okay. So it's basically like a dilution problem, though, because once you mix the two, your concentration of TBNO32 is no longer 0 0.025 because you're actually doubling, actually not doubling, you're going to change your volume. Instead of having 100 mils, how many mils do you have? Plus 100, which gives you a total of 400 mils. So concentration is how many moles you have for every what? Liter. And so if you change your volume, your concentration actually changes as well. Okay? So... What we want to know is we want to know how much our concentration is of our lead, and we want to know how much our concentration is of our Cl minus. And if we know by the law of conservation of matter, if we figure out how much lead there is here and how much chlorine there is here, then do you agree that it must be the same amount there? Yes. Yes. Okay? By the law of conservation of matter, if we can figure out how much we have here and how much we have here, then we should be able to detect how much is there. That should be equal. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much our PB2 plus is, our concentration of our PB2 plus, in parentheses, right under it, I'm going to write from PBNO32, okay? I want to know how much my PB2 plus concentration is from the PBNO32, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually figure this out by saying, so maybe over on this side, let's just write what this is. Our new concentration, new molarity, is equal to, remember it's M1V1 equals M2V2? So it's equal to M1V1 over what? V2. V2. Okay? So, as long as we know this, that's our final concentration. This is going to be our final volume, given the originals that we had in order to figure out the concentration, because we know what the concentration was before, but we've added them together and we've changed our volume, so now we need to figure out with the new volume what our concentration is. Okay, so PB2 plus is, uh, let's just do this. Let's do our M2 is equal to. All right, M1, molarity one. Our original molarity of the lead nitrate was 0 0.025, 0 0.025 molar. What was our original volume? 100 mils, so 0 0.100 liters. By the way, if you use mils, we could do that on the next one, you're fine as long as you use mils both times because they're going to they're gonna cancel out anyway. Okay? Divided by, what's your total new volume? What's your total new volume? New total volume is equal to 100 plus 300 mils, and so what does that give us? 400 mils. So we're going to write 0 0.400 liters. Again, you can do it in mils instead. Okay, so let's calculate this. And I got 0 0.00625, 0 0.00625 molar PB2+. plus. Okay, so if we figured that out, let's figure out what our Cl- minus concentration is now too. Cl- minus from what? What are we figuring out our concentration from? From what? The NaCl. Okay, from the NaCl. So we know that our concentration of the NaCl originally, so M2 is equal to, original concentration is 0 0.015 molar. And it doesn't matter what your ratio is. It is a 0 0.015 molar. If they give you the concentration, that is the concentration of it. Okay? Times the volume of it, which they said was 300 mils. Let's do this one in mils. Okay? just so that you see that you would get the same answer anyway. 300 mils divided by, what's your new total volume? It's the same as before, what is it? 400 mils. Okay, and then we're gonna multiply and divide, and what we get is 0 0.01125 molar, and that's your Cl minus concentration. I'm just gonna do a little squiggly line right there, and a little squiggly line right there. It's a really long problem, 
but it's not hard to understand. Once you start setting things up, things start working out together. Okay, they start working because you realize, okay, I need my concentrations. Where am I supposed to get my concentrations from? Well, it looks like you could use that and that, but if you change your volume, you have to figure out your new concentration. Okay, so that's why we did that M1V1 um, step. Okay, what we just got here are random concentrations. We're not at equilibrium. Nowhere in the problem did they say that we're at equilibrium. We're trying to figure out if it precipitates or not. So if you're not at equilibrium, you don't use K. What do you use? Q. Q. So this is our K. Let's figure out what our Q value is. So Q is equal to our PB2 plus, which is the 0 0.00625, times the Cl minus concentration, which we just figured out was 0 0.01125. But what do you have to do to that one? Squared. Okay. And so what we get is we get that Q is equal to 7.91 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay. Well, so we have our K right here. This is our K, and this is our Q. Remember what we said. If you haven't gotten to K yet, you're still less than K, then your reaction is going to keep going forward, and it's going to favor what? The products. So that means that you would be shifting to the right. If your Q is greater than K, which way is your reaction going to go? Yeah. To the left, favoring the reactant. So let's figure out, is Q bigger than K or less than K? Oh, so here's our Q, here's our K. Okay? Is Q less than K or greater than K? Oh, Q is less than K. And if Q is less than K, therefore, just like one of the therefore things right there, therefore, what happens? Your reaction is going to go which way? Product. Product. Yep. Reaction favors products. Well, this is the big thing. What are your products? Are your products in this reaction aqueous or a solid? Aqueous. Products are ions, are aqueous ions. So what does that mean? Are you creating a precipitate then? No. No precipitate will form in this situation. Okay, so your answer is no. If you were favoring the reactants, what phase is your reactant in? A solid, then you would be forming a precipitate.